My name is still Chris Ann Lanina, so nice to see you all. I'm here today representing the Sierra Club Beyond Coal campaign for Tennessee. First, I want to thank all of you board members and TVA staff for the many steps in the right direction you have taken in recent years. The latest being the decisions to retire the Allen Coal Fire Power Plant and to sign a power purchase agreement for 88 megawatts of utility scale solar from Mississippi. TVA's 2015 IRP process has been extremely positive, and we appreciate all the time and effort staff and the board have committed to it. We commend you for treating energy efficiency as a resource and for the additional analysis you have been running in response to concerns with some of the data used for the draft IRP. We also want to thank you for the extensive opportunities for meaningful public input throughout the process. Most recently, holding public meetings in seven cities across the valley with productive and rewarding. At those meetings, much of the discussion on the part of both staff and the public focused on the transition away from fossil fuels to energy efficiency and solar and wind power. Public comments overwhelmingly favored that transition happening sooner rather than later. And staff has made it clear that they understand that clean energy is our future. We all recognize that because technology innovations grow exponentially, and solar, wind, and energy efficiency are all technologies, the energy landscape is changing much faster than anyone expected to. TVA will change with it. Ideally, TVA will lead. We encourage the board to choose a strategy in the final IRP that maximizes energy efficiency, solar, and wind power in the first five years of the planning period and to approve a budget and policies that allow the implementation of that plan. It is critical to embrace clean energy, to improve health, clean our air and water, reduce electricity bills, create family sustaining jobs, and curb climate change. Please take this opportunity to lead the nation as we transition away from fossil fuels to a renewable energy economy. Thank you so much. Rich, Mr. Johnson, members of the board. Thanks for the opportunity to speak with you today. My name is Amanda Garcia, and I'm here on behalf of the Southern Environmental Law Center. As you know, SELC participates in the RERC and the Integrated Resource Plan Working Group. A few weeks ago, I attended a joint board RERC meeting in Nashville on the implications of the initial IRP study results and the opportunities and challenges associated with a shift toward a more participatory utility model. I came away from that meeting inspired by some of the innovative thinking happening at the state and local power company level regarding how to integrate these resources into TVA's portfolio in a fair and equitable way. I hope you did too. I want to thank TVA and the board for continuing to seek stakeholder input into how the IRP may facilitate TVA's transition into the utility marketplace of the future. Last week, SELC submitted comments on the draft IRP, and we understand that staff is currently reviewing the draft in light of all the comments it has received. I want to make two points uh, based on our comments. My first point is this. The marketplace of the future is here now. Perhaps the most striking finding in the draft IRP is the negligible difference in cost between the traditional least cost plan and the plans that maximize energy efficient investment in energy efficiency and renewable energy. The differences in cost are so slight that a single unanticipated regulatory event could erase those differences entirely. By treating energy efficiency and renewables as resources, the IRP makes clear that these resources, investing in these resources rather than fossil fuel supply side resources, is the most prudent investment choice for TDA over the next several years. My second point is this. The draft IRP's findings related, related to carbon emission reductions illustrate that TDA can be a regional leader when it makes a firm commitment to a goal. TVA's pre-existing commitment to carbon emission reduction has positioned it well to move into a carbon-constrained future. 
whether that comes as a result of the Clean Power Plan or, other, or otherwise. The draft IRP also illustrates that for TVA, carbon, reducing its carbon footprint is consistent with the least cost provision of electricity. And TVA's recent decision to voluntarily join the U.S. Department of Energy's Partnership for Energy Sector Climate Resilience will further support these efforts. We think TVA has the same opportunity to lead, to be a leader in energy efficiency. A recent report by the Southeast Energy Efficiency Alliance found that the strong efficiency gains made by two of TVA's regional peers, Energy Arkansas and Gulf Power, were achieved because the utilities and the regulators put in place a supportive policy framework and firm budget resources. The TVA board has the authority to put those elements in place in TVA territory, and we think the IRP calls on you to do so. Thank you. Good morning, my name is Dr. Cliff Cocker. I'm a founding board member of Physicians for Social Responsibility in Tennessee and Director of International Outreach for the Climate Mobilization Project that happened in Nashville. About 12 hours ago, I flew in from D.C., where I was meeting with faith leaders from around the country who were gathered for a week meeting with one scientific expert and two health experts. From these scientific experts, I would point out that the overwhelming majority of scientists, more than 97.5%, believe that climate change is one real, two, different from anything we have experienced in the history of the planet, three, driven by human activities such as the burning of fossil fuels, four, is actively in process at the moment, and we see its effects in events like Hurricane Katrina, Hurricane Sandy, the polar vortex, the unprecedented melting of glaciers and tundra, and the floods of 2010 in Nashville. But most of all five, that we can change what course we're on. We can slow and eventually stop this process. The health experts at this meeting stress that the end of burning of fossil fuels will have an immediate positive impact on the public health in every community in the TVA service region. Moreover, such a change would contribute to the health of the nation, ultimately the planet, all its residents, and our generations to come. Mr. Chairman, members of the board, staff, TVA is to be commended for sharing the proposed integrated resource plan and welcoming comments to the current stakeholder input process. To be sure, the latter stands as a model for other energy providers across the country and throughout the world. Tennessee Physicians for Social Responsibility shares your concern for the well-being of residents in the TVA service region with our primary focus on the immediate regions public health status, the near-term health impacts on the most vulnerable people, and the ultimate long-term impacts of catastrophic climate change that will affect all of us. Together we now stand at the crossroads where TVA has the opportunity, starting with the commitment to harvesting the low-lying fruit of energy efficiency, to lead this nation toward what is now clearly both a national and an international goal, the inevitable transition from toxic fossil fuels to a clean energy economy, relying on renewable processes such as solar and wind. Given the current data, as well as projected on mortality and morbidity attributable to the fossil fuel-based economy, nothing less than the most aggressive efforts at energy efficiency makes sense. This remains true from a viewpoint of comprehensive economic analysis that includes the externalized health costs, cost of human lives, cost of work, etc., as well as from the perspective of a moral philosophy related to the common good of this generation to come. As I see my time is ending, let me just add one point. Uh, I have a list of comments from religious leaders, Methodist, Presbyterian, Episcopalian, Islamic, Jewish, and the Pope is about to deliver an encyclical uh, that will, I think, galvanize world opinion among the people of faith, that this is a moral imperative. And I would call on you to be part of the leadership that takes us down that road of responding to the moral imperative. It is a crisis, and the crisis is already in process. Thank you. Board members, um, I'm Brooke Johnston with a small um, Tennessee Valley environmental group called Best Matter. Today I'd like to speak with you about transparency and TVA's nuclear power plants, including findings from our Browns Ferry report and our proposals to make radiation visible. Um, TVA has a planned schedule of routine radioactive releases into our environment. 
nuclear waste. Um, this is nuclear waste that is regularly released into our air and water. We ask that you post on your website the release schedules for each reactor. The state of Connecticut has already implemented a law requiring this posting of radiation release schedules. And TVA can be a guide for power countries, companies across the nation to protect the public by providing accurate information about nuclear waste release schedules. This would be a simple task, requiring only a page on the TVA website. The Connecticut law requires operators to, I quote, post on their website all plans for routine and continuous releases of radiation to the atmosphere, including dates, times, and fissile materials, as soon as such releases are scheduled. We also ask that you post your schedules for refueling, since it is estimated that half of our annual exposures to radionuclides happen during the short periods of fuel movement for, to refuel every 12 to 18 months. People near or downwind of nuclear power stations may have significantly high exposures during these emission spikes compared to during uh, the releases during the rest of the year. Estimates range from 20 to 100 times higher. This also would be a simple posting of refueling dates on the same affluent release website page. Not a difficult task. Um, our third request today also addresses the lack of transparency about exposures to nuclear waste. We asked you that you go online to the public with your real-time plant monitor. Since they are already online to the State Department Health, Health Department, uh, it shouldn't be a fairly simple task to put them online for the public. This also would not be a breach of security since it's simply monitoring the plant's existing ambient radiation. Um, in conclusion, we ask that you fulfill your mission to benefit the people of the valley by providing accurate and timely information for public health and safety. Simply by posting your routine affluent release schedule and your nuclear refueling schedules and your real-time monitoring information online. Thank you for your consideration of our request and for your service to our family.